Kurbaga. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the world of survival horror. More specifically, Resident Evil. After the mixed response to Resident Evil 6, Capcom wanted to take Resident Evil into a new but familiar direction. With Resident Evil 7, Capcom changed to a first person perspective and returned the series to good old survival horror as we once knew it. The game scaled back from the run and gun RE6 and switched back to Limited Ammo, a protagonist that wasn't a super agent, and a location more similar to that of Spencer Mansion. But because of Resident Evil 6's mixed response, Resident Evil 7 didn't sell as well as its predecessors. In December 2017 it was reported that Capcom have already began work on the follow-up title to 7, presumably being titled Resident Evil 8. But realistically the next title is probably going to be Revelations 3 or something like that. Or maybe Remake 2 which was announced like 3 years ago and nothing's really been reported on it since. So that brings us to this video. I asked myself the question after reading a few articles and that is what could Resident Evil 8 potentially be? I had a few ideas running in my head. I literally just put together a big list of ideas what I wanted Resident Evil 8 to potentially be because I couldn't really base it off articles or anything like that because no one was really talking about or there is no news on Resident Evil 8 really there's it was announced that yeah it's been worked on but there's nothing there's nothing else apart from that we just need to speculate at the moment so that's what this video is going to be so in terms of story, after the Not A Hero DLC in 7, Chris Redfield and the newly formed Umbrella Corporation, who are now a private military company founded by former Umbrella staff, have cleaned up the mess at the Baker Estate, rescuing Ethan and Mia Winters and Jack and Zoe Baker. Not A Hero introduced the organisation that was responsible for the events of 7, them being called The Connections. Not much is known about The Connections at the moment. Um, I'm guessing if I played through Not Hero DLC again, you could probably find out a lot more. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, I don't really know much about the connection so far. I'm guessing they're going to be the big main antagonist in 8. But after Chris takes out Lucas Baker, he receives a call from his handler, telling him to return to base to receive a phone call. The handler's voice in this call suggests that it's quite urgent. So this could mean anything. But with uh, Chris's reintroduction to the new RE series, as Capcom like to call it, Maybe Resident Evil 8 will be about him and the new Umbrella Corp tackling a new mission and going to a new location where the virus is spread. But if I were making this game I would introduce a new protagonist kinda similar to Seven, kinda similar to Ethan Winters, that being a guy or a girl who has no training in combat whatsoever and is just a normal civilian thrown into a fucked up situation and probably has to deal with the, with the connections, the organisation. In terms of gameplay I want everything from Resident Evil 7 to make a return to 8. That means limited ammo, not big ass guns that could one hit anything, and no big super agents like Leon S. Kennedy and Chris Redfield as a remain protagonist. If they do return to a secluded location, I want there to be more rooms that require different types of keys to unlock than 7. In 7, you have to obtain the snake key, the scorpion key, and the crow key. The scorpion key didn't have much use to it, it only opened two doors, and that, and one of those doors didn't really need to be unlocked, you can get like around that door through a different route but the key was mainly for convenience than anything else really. The snake key unlocked two rooms and the uh, crow key unlocked an optional storage room where you could find extra supplies. 
So yeah, the crow key was completely optional. You didn't really need it. It was just kind of there if you wanted extra supplies and stuff, or if you wanted the grenade launcher, if you played through the normal mode, I think. So yeah, if the key system re makes a return in A, I want there to be a lot more interesting places and rooms that I can lock with these keys. I would also like different variants of enemies and not just have the molded return, but not have traditional zombies to return either. I'm just not really into the moldeds. Like on in seven, they were all right. They were they were kind of just there. You didn't really care about them that much. They weren't really that scary. I was a lot more terrified of like Jack Baker because you were walking through these halls, you're being really careful, and then you just hear Jack Baker screaming and all, screaming his head off, just walking down the halls trying to find you. That was a lot more horrifying than uh, a big weird monster thing lurking in the basement. It wasn't really that scary. I was just kind of walking around like, ah, yes, yeah, these fuckers again. I can easily kill them, and then that's it. I'm guessing they were just added just to add like a bit that extra enemy just to kind of like catch you off guard but apart from that they weren't really that scary they weren't really they were just they weren't even a problem there really. they were just you know a nuisance <laughs> so yeah I want there to be enemies kind of like hunters and all that from the first game because yeah in the first game uh, that being that Resident Evil 1 or Resident Evil 1 remake um, you had zombies you had hunters you had the ne um not nemesis what's his name the tyrant uh, you had a big snake monster, you had all these different kinds of monsters in Resident Evil 1 and even going up to like 4. Um, but then Resident Evil 7, yeah, you had the Baker family that did transform into like different kind of things uh, along the way. I won't spoil it or anything like that, but the, like the molded, there were different variants of the molded, but at the same time wasn't really anything new, it was just kind of, they were just kind of there. So I was thinking around my head as to what kind of locations I would like to see in 8, and I've got a little list. Like I've said before, we know insanely little about the next RE title, so all this is just my ideas on the game's potential locations. They're not actually based on anything real. It's just something. It's just some things that I just came up with in my head. So the first idea is an old umbrella asylum. So the game would throw a civilian character into this abandoned umbrella asylum. The asylum was bought by the original umbrella, who used it as a cover to experiment on ill patients turning them into strange monsters or zombies. The facility was closed down due to the events in Raccoon City, but now the asylum has been taken over by an old umbrella scientist who worked in the asylum when it was running, and uses it for experiments once again for the connections. In the asylum, the player would have to fight strange creatures created by the scientist, such as m mutated zombies or maybe the return of the molded. Hopefully not the molded. I really fucking hate the molded. I can imagine the asylum being laid out similar to re one Spencer Mansion. It would contain insane puzzles in different wings locked by a certain key. Each wing would have like its own set style and all that as well, kind of like Spencer Mansion. Like the right side of the mansion was a lot more dark and brooding, and the left side was a lot more. It feel or it felt a lot more welcoming. The asylum would look and feel like the one from Outlast, but with less sick crazy people running around. <laughs> the second idea was this town. Now the town is based on Silent Hill. Because I've was been play i been playing Silent Hill recently, I've been playing Evil Within 2 recently as well, and they both contain like towns as their like central hub points. Silent Hill has this really cool and horrifying town that you can go open and play, openly explore. All the town require keys and weird puzzles and all that within it. So this is what I thought about the town in Resident Evil 8. So this town is again used by, uh, used for experiments by the evil corporation known as The Connections. The town has weird traps and puzzles like the RE1 mansion. The town is located on some unknown uncharted island that the, protag uh, the protagonist either goes to willingly or is just washed up on. Again, the main enemies would be more uh, unique and nothing like the molded from Resident Evil 7. The town would be small and condensed and I can imagine it being similar to Resident Evil Code Veronica where it's like an island based uh, Resident Evil game and you would have different keys for like just different types of buildings really. So yeah that was my ideas on Resident Evil 8, let me know what you think down in the comments below and when uh, more news on Resident Evil 8 or any other Resident Evil title comes out you'll be sure to find it here. So thanks for watching and bye bye.